Hi everyone, it's Professor Permanton, and in this video we're going to talk about antiderivative rules. So in the previous video we talked about how to find the family of antiderivatives, and we also talked about the indefinite integral. Now we're going to actually talk about how to find the family of antiderivatives using antiderivative formulas. So let's pick up where we left off. Antiderivative rules. Since antidifferentiation should be thought of as the inverse operation of differentiation, we can think of this as going backwards from the derivative process. And so since we have basic differentiation rules to find the derivative of a function, we also can find basic antiderivative rules to go backwards. However, there's just one surprise with the antiderivative for a rational function, 1 divided by x, because the domain of a rational function, 1 divided by x, x cannot be 0. So the antiderivative of 1 divided by x cannot just simply be natural log of x. It actually is natural log of absolute value of x, because we want the x to be a positive number. X cannot be a negative number because natural log of a negative number does not exist. And we want to make sure that the X cannot be zero because we can't evaluate natural log of zero either. The reason why we need absolute value around the X is because the X can be any real number except for zero for the rational function one divided by X. But when we find the antiderivative, which would be natural log of X, X can't be everything for the natural log function to exist. The natural log function can only exist if X is positive. So to be able to see why this is true, Recall that if x is less than 0, then the absolute value of x is just the opposite of x. So if x is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is the opposite of negative 3, or positive 3. And the natural log of absolute value of x would be natural log of negative x. So if x is less than 0, then we have the following derivative rule. The derivative of natural log of absolute value of x would be derivative of natural log of negative x, because x is a negative number. The derivative rule said you take 1 divided by the argument to 1 divided by negative x, times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is negative x, and the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So 1 divided by negative x times negative 1, and that gives you 1 divided by x as the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x. On the other hand, if x is positive, then the absolute value of x is just the same number x. So the absolute value of 7 is 7. So the natural log of absolute value of x just becomes natural log of x. And so if x is greater than 0, the derivative rule would be derivative of natural log of absolute value of x is the derivative of natural log of x, and we know that's 1 divided by x. So, in conclusion, the antiderivative of f of x equals 1 divided by x, this antiderivative for the rational function, is natural log absolute value of x. Don't forget about the absolute value around the argument of the natural logarithm function when you find the antiderivative. So one of the other things that we talked about in the previous video is the indefinite integral sign. So in the next definition, we're going to see the special symbol for the indefinite integral sign over and over that's talking about the family of antiderivatives of a function. The symbol, this elongated s, is called the integral sign for a function f of x, that's called the integrand, and the symbol dx indicates the anti-differentiation is performed with respect to the variable x. The arbitrary constant, capital C, is called the constant of integration. So let's talk about the antiderivative rules. In what follows, f of x and g of x are differentiable functions, so that means you can find the derivative of f of x and g of x. The k, the n, and the capital C are all just real numbers, or constants. Rule number one says, the constant multiple rule. That means if you have a function times a constant as part of the integrand and you have the variable integration as x, k does not depend on x. k is just a constant. So you can take the k outside the integral sign. And so you can find the antiderivative of f of x and then find that family of antiderivatives and just multiply your answer by k. Number two, the sum and difference rule. If you have the integral, the indefinite integral of a sum or a difference of two or more functions or two or more terms in this case, then you can find the antiderivative of each function separately. So find the family of antiderivatives of f of x, and then find the family of antiderivatives of g of x, and you can add or subtract those two different answers. Keep the sign between the functions in terms of also their antiderivatives. So number three, the power rule for antidifferentiation. If you have the integral of x to the n dx, well, if derivatives were taken, we would subtract one from the exponent. We talked about in the previous video that if you want to find the antiderivative of a power function, you need to add one to the exponent. So x to the n plus 1 in the numerator, and then you divide by n plus 1. And then don't forget about your constant of integration. If you want to talk about the family of antiderivatives, you need to add plus c as any constant. And so keep in mind that this formula only makes sense if n is not negative 1, because if n was negative 1, the denominator is 0, and that makes the entire family of antiderivatives undefined. So you can't use the formula if n is negative 1. Number 4 exponential functions. If you have the indefinite integral of an exponential function like a to the x power, the integrand is an exponential function where the base is a and the variable is in the exponents. The antiderivative rule says you keep the exponential function exactly as the same, but instead of multiplying by natural log of the base like we would with derivatives, you have to divide by natural log of the base. So divide by natural log of a 
and again, plus C, because you have a constant of integration for the family of antiderivatives. And then number five, the rule that we just talked about, the natural logarithm, you have the antiderivative of x to the negative one dx. So this is the case where n is negative one for power functions. So if your exponent is negative one, it's a special case. It's really the integral of one divided by x when you move x to negative one down to the denominator of the fraction. And so the antiderivative of one over x we talked about is natural log of the absolute value of x. And again, plus c for the family of antiderivatives. Keep in mind that each of these antiderivative rules listed before can be verified using derivatives. If you take the derivative of the right side of these formulas, if you take the derivative of the antiderivative, you should get the integrand back. So we're going to show this using the power rule. So if you differentiate the right-hand side of the power rule in the last formula, then you have the integral of x to the n dx was x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c, where c is the constant of integration. The derivative of the right-hand side of this formula would be d dx of x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c, the constant of integration. We know that we can take the derivative of each term separately, so d dx of the first term, x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, plus the derivative with respect to x of c, the constant of integration. And so this first function knows that you have it 1 divided by n plus 1. That's just a coefficient, so you keep it. And then you have x to the n plus 1 that you want to take the derivative of. The derivative of c, that's just a constant, so the derivative of a constant we know is 0. And so now x to the n plus 1, that's a power function. If you want to find the derivative, you need to use the power rule for derivatives. And so we know that if you want to take the derivative of x to the n plus 1, you bring the power to the front and make it a coefficient. So you have 1 divided by n plus 1, that was already a coefficient, times n plus 1 when you take the power down, and then you subtract 1 from the power. So now it's x to the n power. So 1 divided by n plus 1 times n plus 1, that just cancels out and just gives you 1. So 1 times x to the n is just x to the n. And so you get the integrand on the left-hand side of this formula. And so that verifies that the antiderivative rule is correct. So now let's use the antiderivative rules with an example. Example four, anti-differentiation rules. Determine the family of antiderivatives for each of the following functions. Check your answer using differentiation to show that the derivative of the antiderivative is the original integrand. So number one, the function f of x is equal to 3x to the seventh, subtract 15 times square root of x, plus 14 divided by x squared. We want to find the family of antiderivatives for this function. And so we know the family of antiderivatives can be represented using an indefinite integral sign. So the indefinite integral of this function f of x, 3x to the seventh minus 15 square root of x plus 14 divided by x squared, dx tells us that x is the variable of integration. And so let's rewrite each of the terms so we have a power of x. So the first term is okay, 3x to the seventh minus 15 square root of x. That's really minus 15x to the one half power when you change it to a fraction power. And then the last term is really 14x to the negative two when you move x squared to the numerator. And then again, keep the dx because that's telling you the variable of integration is x. So now let's use the sum and difference rules to find out the integer of each term separately. So you have the indefinite integral of 3x to the seventh, dx, minus the indefinite integral of 15x to the half, dx, and then plus indefinite integral of 14x to the negative two, dx. So each integral sign also gets a dx. It tells you what the variable integration is for each of the integrals. So now let's use the anti-differentiation rules. The first function, the three is the coefficient, so you can take the coefficient three and bring it outside the integral sign, and so you just keep the three. But now x to the seventh, that's a power function, so you need to add one to the exponent and also divide by the exponent. So you have three times, you would add one to the exponent that makes it x to the eighth, but then you also have to multiply by one divided by whatever the exponent becomes. So multiply by one eighth. So you have three times one eighth times x to the eighth. Now the next integral, you have 15 times x to the half. So again, keep 15 as a coefficient, and now you need to add one to the exponent because x to the one half is a power function. So if you add one to the exponent, that becomes one half plus one, or three halves. And then you also have to divide by three halves. But if we know that we divide by three halves, it's really multiplied by the reciprocal. So it's 15 times the reciprocal of three halves, or two thirds, times x to the three halves after you add one to the exponent. And now the integral of the last term. You have 14 as a coefficient, so again, keep the 14. You want to add 1 to the exponent because x to the negative 2 is also a power function. So add 1 to the exponent becomes negative 2 plus 1, or negative 1. And then you divide by negative 1. And again, since this was an indefinite integral, we really have a constant of integration for each of these three integral signs. So if you have a constant of integration plus another constant of integration plus another constant of integration, you just have one constant. So let's just use capital C to represent the constant of integration for all three integrals added together. So to just to simplify, you have 3 times 1 eighth, that's 3 eighths, x to the eighth power, minus 15 times 2 thirds, that's 30 divided by 3, x to the 3 halves power, minus 14x to the negative 1, 
plus c for the constant of integration for the family of antiderivatives. And then notice you can simplify 30 divided by 3 to make it 10. So the family of antiderivatives would be capital F of x, 3 eighths x to the eighth power, subtract 10 x to the 3 halves power, subtract 14 x to the negative 1, and then plus c for the constant of integration. If you take the derivative of this answer, you should get the original function back. So I'll let you check that the derivative of the antiderivative is the original function. Number two, this time lowercase g of x is e to the x plus 12, subtract 16 divided by x, subtract 4 raised to the x power. So this time we have many different types of functions. We have an exponential function, we have just a constant function, we have a rational function, and then again we also have an exponential function at the end. But let's find the family of antiderivatives for this function g of x. So the family of antiderivatives would be represented as an indefinite integral. So indefinite integral of e to the x plus 12, subtract 16 divided by x, minus 4 raised to the x power, dx tells us that the variable integration is x. So the sum and difference rule says we can take the antiderivative of each term separately. So the indefinite integral of the first term, so indefinite integral of e to the x dx, plus, so keep the sign between the two different terms, so indefinite integral of 12 dx, subtract indefinite integral 16 divided by x dx, subtract indefinite integral of 4 to the x power dx. So the antiderivative e to the x, so it's an exponential function with base e. What was the function before we took the derivative to get e to the x? Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the antiderivative of e to the x is also e to the x. The antiderivative of 12 is 12 times x, because the derivative of 12x is just 12. Subtract. 16 is a coefficient, so you keep it. And then what's the antiderivative of 1 divided by x? Well, we know that's natural log of the absolute value of x. So subtract 16 times natural log of absolute value of x. Subtract, and now this last term is an exponential function. And so that means that we need to use the exponential function rule to find its antiderivative. The base is 4, so the antiderivative would be 4 to the x divided by natural log of 4. And don't forget about the plus c at the end as the constant of integration. You want to talk about the family of antiderivatives, you need to have a plus c. And so now to simplify, the first term is e to the x for the antiderivative, plus 12 times x, subtract 16 times natural log of x, and then you can make this last term as one fraction. You have 4 to the x in the numerator and natural log of 4 in the denominator, and again, don't forget about the plus c. And then, if you want to check your answer, you want to check that the derivative of your answer, the derivative of the antiderivative, capital G prime of x, is the original function that you were given. Let's try a couple more. Number three, h of y is equal to y subtract 3 all in parentheses to the second power. So you want to find the family of antiderivatives for this function, so indefinite integral sign of y minus 3 all squared. Now the variable of integration is y because the function is in terms of y. So what can we do to find the antiderivative this time? Well, we don't know how to find the indefinite integral of a function that's being squared, like y minus 3. So let's simplify the function first. So you have y minus 3 squared, that's y minus 3 times y minus 3, and so now you can use FOIL to actually expand what this polynomial is. y times y will give you y squared, y times negative 3 gives you negative 3y, and then negative 3 times y gives you another negative 3y, that's negative 6y, and negative 3 times negative 3 gives you 9. So this is really finding the family of antiderivatives for this function, y squared subtract 6y plus 9 with respect to y. So now notice you have three different terms. You can find the antiderivative of each term separately using the sum and difference rules. So the indefinite integral of y squared, dy, indefinite integral of 6y, dy, keep the minus sign between the two different integrals, and then plus the indefinite integral of 9, dy. So now find the antiderivative of y squared. Well, y squared is a power function, so you want to add 1 to the exponent and then also divide by that new exponent. So it becomes 1 third y cubed. Subtract, 6 is the coefficient, so you keep it. The antiderivative of y, y is a power function, so you would add 1 to the exponent to get y squared, and then you have to divide by the new exponent, so divide by 2. So 6 times 1 half times y squared would be the antiderivative of the second integral. And then the antiderivative of 9 would not be 9x, it's 9y, because the variable integration is y. So you have 9y, and then don't forget about the constant of integration plus c. And so now just simplify. You have 1 third y cubed, subtract 6 times a half, that's really 3, so 3 times y squared, plus 9y plus c. That's the family of antiderivatives for this function h of y. So capital H of y would be 1 third y cubed, plus 3y squared, plus 9y plus c. And again, if you want to check your answer to see if it's correct, the derivative of the family of antiderivatives, capital H prime of y, should be the original function lowercase h of y. So let's try one more. Number four, k of t is 8t cubed, subtract 6t squared, plus 9t plus 7, all divided by t squared. So we don't know how to find the derivative of this fraction because it's a fraction of two different functions. We need to simplify the function first, if possible. 
So we want to find the family of integers, so n to the integral of 8t cubed, subtract 6t squared plus 9t plus 7, all divided by t squared. And again, the variable integration this time is t, so dt. Let's simplify each of these fractions by breaking the fractions up into smaller fractions. You have 8t cubed divided by t squared, that's one fraction. 6t squared divided by t squared, that's another fraction. 9t divided by t squared, that's a third fraction. And then you have 7 divided by t squared as the last fraction. So you have indefinite integral of 8t cubed divided by t squared, subtract 6t squared divided by t squared, plus 9t divided by t squared, plus 7 divided by t squared, and then dt. So you can simplify each of the fractions first before you find the antiderivative. You have 8t is the first term after you simplify. The second term just becomes negative 6. The third term is 9 divided by t, and the last term can't be simplified at all, so it just stays 7 divided by t squared. And again, we haven't found the antiderivative yet, so just keep the dt. So now use the sum and difference rules to find out what is the antiderivative for each of the terms separately. So the indef integral of the first term, so integral of 8t dt, subtract integral of 6 dt, plus integral of 9 divided by t dt, and then plus integral of the last term, 7 divided by t squared, and again, dt. And so you notice the t squared in the denominator can be brought to the numerator to make it t to negative 2. So it's really that last integral, 7t to negative 2 dt. So now let's find that integer of each term. You have the integer of 8t. Well, t is a power function, so you want to add 1 to the exponent to find its integer of. So you have 8 times 1 half t squared after you divide by the new exponent again. The integer of 6 is 6 times t because the variable of integration is t. The third integral has a 9 divided by t. The 9 is the coefficient, so you keep it. But then you would have 1 divided by t. The integer of 1 divided by t is natural log of the absolute value of t. So you have 9 times natural log of the absolute value of t. And then the last term. The 7 is the coefficient, so you would keep it. And then t to negative 2, that's a power function. So add 1 to the exponent. That makes it t to negative 1. And then also divide by negative 1. So you have 7 times 1 divided by negative 1 times t to negative 1. And again, plus c, because you want to find the family of integers, not just one integer, but the entire family. And so we found the family of integers, just have to simplify what this answer is. So capital K of t for the family of integers would be 8 times a half is really 4t squared for the first term. Subtract 6t, that's already simplified. 9 times natural log of absolute value t, that's already simplified. And the last term, 7 times 1 divided by negative 1 makes it negative 7. And then t to negative 1 plus c. And again, if you want to find out, is this answer correct or not? If you take the derivative of this family of integers, you should get the lowercase k of t back, the original integrand. So let's finish up this video on antiderivative rules with a couple notes. In general, the indefinite integral of a product is not the product of the indefinite integrals. So what that means is that if you have a product of two different functions, you can't take the antiderivative of each function and multiply your answers. There is not a rule to reverse the product rule. There's not a formula for indefinite integrals of a product. So for example, the integral of x times x squared plus 2, you can't find the antiderivative of x, that's 1 half x squared, and the antiderivative of x squared plus 2 would be 1 cubed x to the third plus 2x. This is not true. What you would need to do instead is simplify the function first and then use the sum and difference rules to find the antiderivative. So you would take the x and multiply by x squared first and x times 2, and then find out what is the integer of each term separately because you would have a sum or a difference then instead of a product. Also, keep in mind that the power rule applies only to power functions of the form f of x equals x of the n, where n is a real number, but n cannot be negative 1. If n was negative 1, you would get this case, the indefinite integral of 1 divided by x dx. x can be brought to the numerator to make it x to negative 1. Integral of x to negative 1 dx. If you use the power function rule incorrectly, you would get x is 0, divide by 0 plus c. Well, since you can't divide by 0, this is not really a rule. You can't use the power function rule whenever the exponent is negative 1, because x and negative 1 is really 1 divided by x, and that's a special rule. The integral of 1 divided by x dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x. And in the last note, the exponential function e to the x has a variable exponent x and the constant base e. So this is not a power function. You cannot use the power rule to find out the family of integers. The integral of e to the x dx, you cannot add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. So you cannot take this and make it e to the x plus 1 and divide by x plus 1. That would be incorrect. The integer of e to the x is just e to the x because the derivative of e to the x 
is e to the x. So keep in mind, you can only use a power function for power functions. You can only use the exponential function rule for exponential functions. And if it was 1 divided by x, we know that's a special case. It's really natural log of absolute value of x is the family of antiderivatives of 1 divided by x. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about antiderivative rules. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about applications of antiderivatives.